guys, welcome to the channel. This is Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am so glad that you popped on to see what I am up to. So in today's video, my husband Chris and I went on an adventure for our anniversary. Everybody's vacations are a little bit different and ours is going secondhand thrifting, garage sales, estate sales, thrift stores, it doesn't really matter. But on this one, it was scheduled. We knew that there was going to be an, an amazing estate sale. It was a lady who was an antique dealer for over 50 years. And so being an hour and a half away, we thought let's make a adventure out of it and hit some other auctions if we find any. And along with garage sales and estate sales and secondhand sales. Ooh. So it actually being into the, into September, I was surprised at how many there were still out there. So in today's video, I, we are going to share with you what we found at that 50 years of collecting and selling antiques estate auction. So if you are new to our channel, I started out doing secondhand finds from thrift stores and then we got into reselling at a local antique mall, my repurposed made over items, which then led me to um, my son and my children and my husband have all started to get involved, which I absolutely love. And so it's kind of geared you that you can't find everything you need at a secondhand store. So sometimes you've got to branch out during garage sale season and start looking at estate sales and auctions. So yes, so I am absolutely amazed which has then brought me to sell on eBay and then sell also on whatnot because I just can't pass these treasures up. So let's get into this amazing haul. So when it comes to buying at auctions, we are not that in depth to know a lot of what a lot of items are worth. We don't have a big antique store. We just have three booths and how um, in our local antique mall. So I am, I guess you can call me cheap. So yes, I, we are looking for items that either, I, like I said earlier, we can make over or I can clean up, I can resell. So when it comes to items at an auction, sometimes I will buy the grouping at the end because I see one or two items in it that nobody else wanted, but I still can see some value in it. So yeah, a lot of this was like, I took care of the box stuff and um, just put out the items that I wanted. I'll just redonate those to a local charity. That's just kind of how it works. So today's haul, yes, there was a lot of items at that auction that I wanted to see, but my feedback of showing the auction, people don't really care to see the auction, I guess. <laughs> So it was amazing. So I always do those on my stories or my other social media, but I just absolutely was amazed. And the biggest seller was were Crocs and people were spending two, $300 easily on a Croc. So I was like, oh, and I collect Crocs, but I don't know if I paid over $25 ever for any of the Crocs that I collect if you've seen my home tour in my home. So I'm happy to find the deal and I'm happy with my treasures, but I do enjoy looking at them. They're just absolutely gorgeous. So right off the bat, you can see all these smalls. So these smalls basically were in boxes or I might have got to the bottom of where you know pick on the table um kind of if you're new to auctions they'll do that so I got a lot of these little bunny rabbits in a bin for about five bucks so look at these cute little easter bunny rabbits they are um a resin they almost look like they could be cast iron the way that they made them she had just impeccable taste so there were those little guys and then this cute little bunny. And I know we're not really into the Easter season right now, but some people collect bunnies all year long. And there was another little bunny. Oh my goodness, is she just super cute? And then a couple more little bunnies. With their little egg backpack. So yeah, these are probably a little bit more geared towards Easter with the little Easter eggs in them. But still just cute. He's got a little crinkled ear. Maybe we can, well, he's, he's good now. He's good now. <laughs> and then we'll just show you all the little bunnies first. <laughs> 
And then two little paper mache bunnies. Oh my goodness, so cute. Little tails, little tails on them. And since you can see these Crocs, I did, these Crocs actually weren't in the grouping that everybody was bidding high. They got separated out to another table. So I was lucky enough to be able, I just, as a reseller, I can't, in our era, I can't resell a $300 Croc for $600. Other, unless you are, I mean, I think a lot of people were buying them maybe for themselves. The lady had lived in Boston and then she also lived in Ionia. So a lot of the Crocs were from those areas. So I think a lot of people were buying them because of that. But this is a newer Croc, but it's absolutely beautiful. Um, 1983. I can't really read this stamp, but it is um, a type of a salt crock, I believe. I am not an expert. Now, this one's 1985. This one's dated, but still a beautiful, a nice crock. And they will, these crocks age amazingly beautiful. So I was happy with those. I think I got them for like $7. I can't remember all the prices, so I'll try, but... Um, and I think I got, this was in a grouping, a little pottery cup. I always love when they are signed by the maker. So that is cool. I actually, this one is always a nice, I've sold these ones before. It's a nice handled one to be able to um, drink out of. Then, you know, sometimes you're all over the place and these are just nice little tins and I could put little labels on them. I love the patina of the wood. They had nice little seals. I think I gave a couple bucks for them. Um, so the seals are so good I can't open it without setting it down. So yeah, so just some labels on these would just be nice. And I've actually never been able to afford to buy one of these. I like these just as shelf sitters. Um, some of her original price tags are on there. Um, and Paid, paid $2 for this is what it says. <laughs> so yeah, I just think this is a nice shelf sitter. It doesn't have the glass to be a viewfinder anymore, but what a nice antique. So I think this was in a lot that I, I took all the pile at the end. Now, I absolutely love this one and I'll probably keep this one for myself. I Advertising, writing, holy cow, does that sell? So, um, I think I paid $7 for this because I wanted to put, I collect these, I don't know how many people, I use them as wood in my black, white, crock, ironstone decor. So I love when they have advertising or writing on them. And this, also the shoe stretcher was in a grouping. And like I said, some of her price tags are on there. So she had an $18 price tag on that. I'll pick up this little glassware. <laughs> now this was in a bucket, but it was all these little miniature ornaments. I don't know what it is about minis, but look at that little, you know, it's for a little Christmas tree. So we had some primitives. All those little cute, oh, let me set them down here. Show you, show you what we've gone through. We got a little beater, and then we got a little knife, and a spoon, a little star, a little strainer, a little beater. Look how cute that is, little thing. Oh, there is a fork, there is a fork. Got a grater and some little molds. And then sometimes there's just random stuff in there. You don't even know what it, what it is for. Um, so some of the glassware was in a lot. Um, so I don't know anything about, I, I like the green. It's almost like an emerald tealy blue green on this piece. Just probably some uh, type of milk glass. I. I don't know. I haven't had my son Alex look at it for me. And then along with these two pieces, 
just some shakers. This one does have the cork. This one does not. She has a $25 price tag on this, this one. So this, like I said, this was in a lot of stuff that I bought. Along with the little bobblehead doggy. I don't know what he has in his mouth. I don't know if you're supposed to pull the string. I don't know what it's supposed to do. I haven't Google lensed it yet. So he's got a little shaky head. And a little bitty iron. <laughs> Littles are just so cute. So next up is another iron. Now the usually the irons I try to steer clear of, but this one had some reminds me of primitive. Um, there's probably a wording for painting on that. So I I did like that one because I do have people that love primitives like I do. And then nobody wanted these for some reason scales, but the scales were in with some amazing coffee grinders and some cast iron. Cast iron goes through the roof. I think the huge coffee grinder went for $4.25. Not $4.25, y'all. <laughs> so uh, I think they were just like moved on with their shock of what they had to pay. Um, but so I loved these scales. These are some eggs that, just some wooden eggs for Easter. So these two pieces come apart. I think I gave $7 for the scale. And then the same for this one, because I won the bid of $7, I could pick out what was left. So absolutely love it. I love that it comes apart. I will be reselling these. I don't have any more room in my, my scale collection. These are gorgeous. Just the patina, that aged. I love it when it's rusty and crusty and shows that age. And then these were also in a little, look like enamelware, little tins, little blue. This is just a little pan. But look at this one. It's a salt. Oh my goodness. And it opens. It's just little. And then there was a pair of little beaters in there. And then there was a brass coffee or teapot. Um, I think I can JB weld this back on. I don't solder. Um, but I could JB weld this back onto it. So it's sad that that had, luckily a person had bought something and realized that this was the handle and um, put it back up there. So that was nice. And then along with the lot, there was this, like a cheese grater, but it's that old time green color that people like. So that was, that was nice. And along with the green handle. I don't know if I've ever sold red, black. I've, I've resold, but not these on the sh um, sifters. <laughs> I told you I bought I bought a bath box that had all the Easter stuff in it, so I kind of just stuck it here and there. Um, this was a cute little Halloween piece that was just random. I tried to bid on the Halloween box that had one of those cat faces in there. And if you ever bought any the decoupage paper from Piglet's Closet, she has that on her page, that black cat face. And I actually was going to pay up for the Halloween because I know Halloween, I stopped at 50 and it was still going. But I know Halloween resells really well. So I was surprised this little one didn't get put in the Halloween box. It's a little bit sun faded, but just a cute little Halloween tin. And then I did go for a couple individual pieces of glass and I paid like $2 a piece <laughs> because there were some amazing pieces that were going really high. So I was happy that they got what they wanted and walked away. <laughs> so for $2, I got this little hobnail blue piece. I, I think it's Fenton. I'm not, I haven't Google lensed any of this yet. And then this beautiful piece that has a $35 price tag on it. Oh my gosh, $35. So I thought it was unique because I've always saw the art glass um, 
that was clear, but this has that brown amber to it. So it's not, not signed, but you can tell that it's old and that it was handmade and it's got that weight to it. It's a beautiful piece. And it's funny, it's funny because I collect ironstone and a lot of times I don't run across ironstone at auctions or anything like that. So this little piece was in a grouping I kept losing on, but finally nobody did take it. It reminds me of ironstone. It's not really stamped. It is so little. <laughs> so I actually collect it and happy to put this in my collection for $2. So that was nice. And then there was a few other pieces because I had to take the lot. It was this little shaker. Um, it's like a little milk glass. I see it does, it is chipped right there. And then this little lady here. So she's just a little vase. She's very lightweight. I don't know what her stamp is. And then a beautiful hand painted wood egg. Eggs usually do well. Now, when we were at the auction, Chris was at the tool section and the outdoor stuff and furniture, and then I was at the home. I, I, there was three rings going on. There was so much to sell. So we were split up, just kind of doing what we do. So he actually picked up one of these. We've never um, got one of these. They're just those cast iron display stoves. Um, the only piece that it had with it was this to lift the little off. I know that there's little cast iron dishes, pots and pans that go with it, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember right offhand what he spent on this, but I guess they would take these with them when they were selling stoves. So ooh, now I gotta get that closed. One of the lots that I bought, um, it was a couple drawers that um, this heavy two pound weight was in there so that was a nice find anything that's numbered does well then the next lot of something i wanted i think i wanted the drawers because there were two sets it was a brass candlestick with some wax on it this little pin, I'm not sure what this pin goes to, but you can definitely tell that it has some aged patina on it. Um, so yeah, I'm not positive what this one, I gotta be careful, it's unscrewing there. <laughs> so be careful with that. Um, just an old brush with wonderful patina on the back. And then a little, a little scoop. So she only had a dollar fifty on this little wooden scoop, and then I love these little cookie presses, cutters. Oh, I think that's a rabbit. <laughs> I think that's a rabbit. I think she liked rabbits. <laughs> and then another little aged cookie cutter. So I love farmhouse. I love primitive. I tend to buy a lot of what I like. So there were some old wooden bowls. I think I gave a couple bucks a piece. Love that. I don't even care that it has a crack because that's character. Now this patina I would not make over at all. I like the aged patina. These are older bowls, so I would leave these as is. I do um, make over the newer bowls, so by sanding off, sanding them down to that natural wood underneath, I think it looks a lot better. As I said earlier, some of the cracks were going way high and then there were some separated out. So those people were still over paying way more than I could afford for glassware. So I switched tables to a different auction. So there was actually this advertising Cloverdale butter and I got this one for seven. So I thought that was a great price. Um, I've never been able to get anything with advertising and I do resell them in my booth. I don't collect advertising crocs. So yeah, so we'll see how that goes. And then along with this butter one, um, yeah, so it's got those little Dutch Holland, I don't, I'm not sure which, there's probably a name for it, um, butter one also. Um, it does have a little bit of a chippage, but you know, they're Crocs. <laughs> They've been around for a while, so this is a gorgeous piece. So what I did is I won the bid at seven so I could pick out what I wanted 
So I picked, and I also picked out this one. Um, this is a nice size, it's a nice color. Sometimes on the newer ones, I will put labels or, some, or stamp on them myself, you know, because that's what my booth is. I repurpose items, but this one with the color and the patina, I think somebody would just like this one as is. Use it to hold their utensils, use it for a plant, use it for just decor piece. So when I was talking about the two drawers, these were it. So these were full of little treasures, trinkets. Um, but a matching set of drawers, Chris, my husband is an amazing woodworker and I knew with two drawers, he could make a cabinet to have these slide in and out of. Um, they had those sewing cabinets there, those little drawers. Oh my gosh, I we saw those a few times now and they just go really high. I didn't even see how much these one, those ones went. So I was happy for the $12.50 <laughs> for the two drawers that I got. I, so I felt like with the drawers and the stuff inside, the $12.50 was worth it. And then I, yet again, I could not believe that they were leaving this behind. Look at this coffee grinder, the patina, the age, the fun metal on it, the handle on the back. Oh my gosh, five dollars! <laughs> yeah, it was on a table. One, it's funny because some of the auctioneers would be like, um, bid, 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 go on to the next bid. Some auctioneers would be bid okay the second bidder can pick if they want or like the one auctioneer that i ended up liking the most was because he's like hey pick off the table what you want we'll start with that so that was awesome um and then yeah so then people started picking off what they wanted and they started walking away and i saw saw, saw some great items so this was still left on there for five dollars so there was some, she had some amazing artwork um, old, it was old, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington. Um, I watched a little four by six frame that was probably six inches deep go for 325. <laughs> so I, I'm not that kind of antique dealer. I don't know anything about, I, you know, I love to repurpose frames. There was not a single frame that I could afford <laughs> there at all that was empty. So Oh, anyway, that was interesting. For the rest of the haul, I'm just going to take the camera down. They're bigger pieces. I'm not going to hold them up. I've shared a lot of the little smalls with you. And if you see this amazing cabinet behind us. So here on our channel, yes, we do furniture makeovers. We take unwanted secondhand pieces. We make them over. Um, yes, but it is funny because in today's market, it seems like furniture has really started to slow to sell are there's a lot of people flipping pieces now so the market is just so i really don't do a lot of furniture until one of the furniture pieces have sold um and we just recently had three pieces sell at once but we hadn't had any really big furniture sales till, since february so 11 pieces sold in february and we twinkled one or two until just recently in september so Yes. So anyway, people aren't buying furniture at auctions either. So we had already had our van packed. Um, and then we spied this piece. There was actually two pieces. We could not fit both of them into our van and we don't have a hitch. We better get a hitch so we can go run a U-Haul the next time. But we got this amazing piece for $55. Only one other lady was bidding on it, and it was a Mennonite lady. <sighs> yeah, $55. So let me take my camera down and share it with you all. And then the thing about this piece, we are not touching it. I'm not doing anything to this beauty. Oh my goodness. The age of it is just absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if the wavy glass is going to show up on camera or not beautiful hinges oh so, yes look at how it closes with those latches um this seems to be sticking a little bit um maybe just sometimes you just take see how it's rubbing there sometimes um chris can just take some sandpaper it was out in the barn so it might have swelled a little bit 
but it's got the wonderful paint. I love the neutral, so it shows off your collections in here. Like I said, yeah, we need to fix that because I don't think that was how it originally happened. It's got wonderful patina. Oh my gosh, it's got the same hardware on these. There is, um, probably you'll see it. The way back has a hole, but in my experience, you just put a piece of tin. It looks like they had some boards over it, but we will just try to find a piece of tin to put over that hole or somebody will be happy as it is. But yes, we are not going to, looks like that could use a little wood glue. So maybe, I mean, there's pieces of parts we'll fix it, but the patina in general, it is staying the same just as it is. It is gorgeous. So we had to re rearrange. We were done at the auction when they got to this part. <laughs> so, Because this is the one I'm like, how are we going to fit that in? Have you ever jangled a whole bunch of stuff in? So yeah, we have a piece that just needs to be tweaked a little bit. <sighs> Gorgeous. So let me share the others with you. dollars I got a milk can. Nobody really cared about milk cans. Chris couldn't help himself and bought a lot of ball jars. <laughs> This one's interesting. Um, it's gonna be hard to see, but it says the ball jar. Pant in November 30th, 1858. And then it had a $3 price tag. I just have to look that one up. I don't have one that old that I collect. And they're really hard sellers in our area because we're a farming community, everybody can. <laughs> So there's just this random candelabra. I know that's a home interiors piece. We got a cast iron um, cross, and I, I would probably paint that a black. This is a gorgeous little metal, probably an ash bucket. Do you all think it's an ash bucket? Love the patina of that. I would just put the rust metal preventer to just bring out the patina. This bench, you all, this bench. <laughs> we were done after buying this, but you know, the thing about being a redhead, it's like an orange traffic cone. <laughs> People notice you. It just is the red hair. And so the auctioneer's like, well, you want this. <laughs> I'm like, no, we don't have any more room in our car. He's like, for a dollar, you want that bench. Aw, man. <laughs> so yes, for a dollar, we got a bench. Yes, it is gorgeous. Look at that shelf underneath it. And I don't know, I might keep it for myself because I just... Re Chris just painted our back shed because we're working on getting a new roof finally in the da da da, you know, in the contractor's world finally got somebody to come. <laughs> so, yeah, so anyway, there you go. Love, love, love this bench. I might have to keep it myself. So then there's this beautiful couple bucks little stool. You know, I love to do stools. We got a couple little tin buckets. I couldn't help myself. Love the patina. This one, this was just a primitive newer one. This one's older. Probably was an ash bucket too. This one actually had all those little um, or Christmas ornaments in it. And then you'll see a few of these because nobody wanted these ginormous boxes because they were filled with walnuts and paper and they were squirrels bedding. So got a lot of three of those in another dairy box that had metal on it for two bucks along with a table I'll show you. Um, Chris got this little table. Is this not the cutest little thing? Um, I don't know. I think I just leave it as is. It's adorable. The paint job, I could redo it. You know, we'll clean it up, see how it cleans. <sighs> it's so cute though. I mean, sometimes you just leave things as is. So I think he got that for two bucks. And then we have this humongous little cubby bread box. These were just some metal. They were some cast iron finials. So yeah, just kind of, I said we had to tuck everything in. Then we got a couple little flower bins. There's another little one inside. I love to redo enamelware pieces. So, oh my gosh, this was gorgeous. Um, this had a $40 price tag on it. Look, and it works. It works. It's amazing. Then I was late to the furniture piece, and there was a pumpkin of this um, somebody had made. 
And I'm like, oh, did those already sell? And the gentleman's like, hey, I only want the pumpkin. If you give me a dollar and pay for it, you can have the cat. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Which he paid a dollar for the two of them. So, and then there's some more old boxes. That stuff came in. We got a shelf. Um, you know, I can't pass up frames. Some enamelware, little tray, an aged little look at that age i even love that it had some paint on it this random orb we got a little bench the bench has holes on it it was a couple bought or not holes the bench has hearts on it so i'm going to come up with something to get rid of the hearts but nice little size of bench and there's that yummy coffee grinder and here's some very heavy metal I believe they're probably candlesticks. Um, figure out how to get that one to stick in better. Maybe it just screws, I'm not sure. It might screw, it just needs tightened. But I thought those were cool. So that's it for this side. Oh, and then some terracotta pots. Good, great size, a dollar. Gotta love that. Now this is Chris's haul. So we'll start right off with this the gentleman, the husband's military box. So this is his military box. Nobody wanted, it has his name on it. Um, that would be cool writing and then do some, maybe some decoupage paper around the sides, you know, that are war, probably a shipping label was on that. And then he got this lot of Tonkas <laughs> for $5. And they need a bath. There were some amazing toys that were there that were going really high. Um, so like I said, we're not that type of an antique dealer. So as I scroll up, this was also with those boxes, um, this metal table, <laughs> it was probably a work table. And at first we thought, oh, I need something for my back shed. And when you see that video, the wood chucks around here, groundhogs, whatever you want to call them, ate the legs off my potting table. So Chris is like, hey, a metal table would work out wonderful i think it's a bit long but for two bucks with see i said we got all four of those boxes with it for two bucks so yeah that was fun so chris um has just started sharing a booth with our two children where our my other two booths are an antique mall he redoes to old tools so at this auction everybody there wanted the new tools so he just cleaned up on tools. Just, it was amazing. So he got all these planers, these beautiful planers. Now he, some of them he can sell as is. Some of them he will clean up and get the rust off. There's videos to come that he's going to share that process with you all. He just does not, he works another 40 hour week job. He does not have time to make his own channel. So I share him here because it is just interesting to watch. Um, so some old planers, he's <laughs> this little bitty wood one. And we got some clamps and just some amazing tools. Here's some weights and scales. Um, this whole box of hardware he bought because these are all those cheese boxes whole bunch of skeleton tools, keys, skeleton keys. Um, those are just neat. This was kind of cool because it still had, um, yeah, it still had, it has the box, it has the screwdrivers. She already, she had some cool wrenches. Look at this wrench has Ford on it. Some of the price tags I told you were still on there. Some um, fun, just fun gauges. Um, and then when it comes to the older tools, you know, they just don't put wording and the time in there. Look at patent pending. This one was really interesting because um, see how when you flip it, when you flip it, it close. It just, it's neat. I mean, just how they made. This was just a fun, cool Mustang clock that you, you, you kind of use these as like foot pedals. And then look at this amazing bottle, brass bottle opener. And now my little clock's gonna talk to us. Um, I don't know what that is. Just some saw, some drills. So yes, he'll clean all these tools up, get a lot of the rust off it. 
leave the patina. A lot of people use these as collections. Now these saws are actually engraved. It's hard to see. So hopefully he's hoping that he can clean them up so you can see that it, the engraving on it. There, there you almost can see some of it, but all that little, that little detail. So this is what he, and he was just as, oh, he was a happy little boy. So, so thank you so much for watching today's estate haul, 50 years of collecting. You can't even imagine all the items that were there. Oh, but it was fun coming home with our van packed and all the treasures. So let me know down below. Do you like to do auctions? Um, are you a reseller? Do you think we got some really good deals? And also, what was your favorite item that we picked up? So again, thanks for watching guys and we will see you next time and you can see what we're up to. Bye.